Okay, do we have anybody that's on Jabber anyway? In case anybody, we, we don't seem to get a lot of Jabber participation. Maybe it's because we don't have anybody man it. But, uh, yes, yes, no, no, I mean, is anybody in the, in the, in the room on Jabber just, it, if, if, if there's somebody who, who's on it, that'd be good. I was hoping we'd see we're missing a few people. Well, uh, I, I expect Aaliyah to be here. She's not here yet, and I don't see. Uh, I don't see naming. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. I don't it's see. Eleven. It finishes actually. Yeah. Gee. I don't see. G in here either. Is G in here? That's Ron. He's here too. Oh, they'll come. That's fine. Yeah, they'll come. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, Les has volunteered to take minutes. So if he goes to the mic, he gets precedence since he's taking minutes. I started this tradi tradition in the routing working group. Yes, yes. And, uh, 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 what I was going to say about the uh, the agenda, the only, uh, we put geolocation last, and what I have is we have two drafts: the te on, on t on the on uh, link attributes, and those could result in some discussion. So if the if the geolocation gets pushed outside of this uh, space. We'll just have naming present both OSPF and ISIS. I mean, both OSPF and ISIS for geolocation during the ISIS slot. I mean, it, there's a there's significant duplication between the two. The only difference is is how they're advertised is really the only thing that. And I think he can. Uh, I I don't see him in here yet, but I think he can uh, account for that. So we won't worry too much if we don't finish if we get a little bit behind. So with that, I'm just going to show everybody the note well. Please uh, read it and know that if you know about any IPR, you are obliged to uh, disclose it. Oh, I don't want to do that. Want to use the? Okay. Okay. So the overall working group status. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going to put the little thing in my. I can use. Okay. Yeah, but I have to put the. Don't I have to put something in here? Is this the, was there a dongle or something? Yeah, there's some kind of technical. Let's see anything in here. Does it come? Is it in part of? The, is it in the? Is this? There it is. Yeah, okay. A small technical glitch. It'll help the ISS team later. Uh -huh. There we go. It should work now. Yep. Okay. So we have. Uh, 
one RFC published since Berlin uh, that was running was PFV3 over IPv4 for IPv6 transition stuff. We have one RFC in the editor's queue that is uh, uh, two-part metric. There was some uh, problem last time with uh, references to SPFV3 extended LSA that has been resolved. Um, and it was last called again. Now it's sitting in the RFC editor's queue. Uh, the right. Show something else for me. Is anybody on there? Just no. says you. No, nobody's on me. That but says you. It's you. No. I see a few people. Okay. All right. I can't see the slide. That's okay. Uh, the TTZ uh, draft was uh, reviewed by Routing Directorate, um, and uh, authors were asked to provide some comments back. Uh, they took a little longer than expected, so. Uh, after that, it is waiting for Alia to give her final comments. She's not in the room. She promised us she will give something back by C also. Expect uh, some comments from her soon. Okay. Uh, segment routing drafts. This has a long history. There is a presentation today, so you will, you will get to hear about it. Uh, there was another revision. A uh, lot of discussion on the mailing list, Chris. And uh, so hopefully the, the new revision tries to address uh, most of the comments. Two new sub-TLVs added. There's a presentation. We'll hear more about it today. Since the uh, chairs have the discussion here, could we go back to that? So there, there were two new items added to, yeah, these, the OSPF V2, at least the uh, segment routing local block, um, and that's right. We have we have a presentation have on a that presentation today, today. On that, so, so okay. Better to hold it until the presentation on the subject. Okay, okay. I'll wait. <laughs> okay, uh, entropy level is uh, uh, already in the last call. Since it was it was. Uh, IETF meeting this this week. We actually gave a long three week uh, period for that. Uh, some good discussion on the list. Looks like there is uh, some more clarification needed. So you will have a revised ID coming out soon. Uh, so the drafts which are close to the last call. Uh, Yang model. Yang model. Actually, if you have been paying attention, uh, we split the segment routing piece out. So that's a separate document. SR Yang which references the SR common and other base specs. Uh, link overload, there was one comment which still needs to be addressed, and very close there. Uh, host bit and uh, MRT draft. These are all close to working up last call. Uh, these are some of the other uh, documents which are currently active. OSPF v3 extended LSA is a long story. We are still waiting for implementations. There is uh, there is some hope in sight at this point. Uh, thanks to the segment routing work for OSPF v3, we are aware of at least a couple of uh, implementations which are going to make use of this. Uh, what we don't know is will they implement all of extended LSA or just the, the parts which are necessary for segment routing. So that's yet to be seen. But at least there is some hope at the end of the tunnel. Um, Flow spec, uh, tunnel and cap, these are all active. Uh, the MSD draft, uh, just yesterday we accepted this as a working group document, so Jeff should be publishing a new version. He already has. He published? Okay. I think so. Well, well, no, I guess. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. And there are a couple of other documents which are we are watching. Uh, there is one for beer, uh, OSPF beer, and there are some documents in CCAMP. That's it. Care. <laughs> so, Chris, your document is coming up. Okay. Yeah, please. Well, sure. up here. Yeah. So, there, there were two new sub TLVs added in the latest uh, uh, draft for segment routing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there was zero discussion on the list about these. This is for a document that had passed working group last call. Right. The, there, There's uh, as you can see, there's uh, 
uh, discussion between all the offers. And, right. And, so, and normally so, the offers updated. So so we have in the next steps. We're not. We're. Why, why don't you let us get to it? Well, I, I have to say that you know why wasn't that discussion taken to the list? Because you know an obvious option at this point is to create another draft, right? At least, and presumably that was discussed among the authors. Yes. So yeah, presumably, shouldn't yes, that yes. have been a discussion for the working group to have? Uh, well, we uh, it could have been, but if then we would have had we would have lost synchronization with ISIS. Shouldn't that be a decision for the working group? Well, you can discuss it now uh, when the document. Uh, when the, so, so it, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, there's there's a difference between right. coming out with a draft that has you know has it inserted, mm -hmm. and there's an appearance of unity among the authors when there may not in fact have been unity among the authors. You come to the working group and say, okay, raise objections. So, I mean, we have some of the offers in the in the room. Stefano has been in the discussion, and uh, Jeff. So, so. This is a a repeated problem with this draft that it had the same problem. Uh, we discussed this at Berlin. Stuff was changed after working group last call. It wasn't brought up. This is a really significant change, and this was not discussed with the working group. How, how can we consider this a working group document if we're going to treat it like this? So, so can you give some time to Stefano and then I have a comment? Yes, yes. Okay. Hi, Stefano Previti, Cisco. What we did in ISIS and OSPF on the two working group documents that we have, in fact, we have three because the we have the equivalent BGPLS extensions. We proposed changes. We document those changes into a new revision of the draft. We submit the draft so that the working group can review it, amend it, comment it, blame it, whatever. So here now is the right moment or on the mailing list to have discussion if you have a problem with those TLVs. Yes, that's I, perfectly fine. Now this part of, part of the reason and uh, we'll take responsibility, the chairs will take responsibility for this. We may have working group last called it prematurely because we were being pressured because our temporary IANA allocations were about to uh, expire and uh, we were getting uh, the, the, the initial take we got on that was that the IESG does not like to extend them too much so so we thought okay let's let's bring this to working group last call the requirements showed up during that time period, and the the offers. I mean, it's 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 not like the offers. There's there's uh, a pretty diverse group of offers on it. Mm -hmm. Discussed it, and now it's now it's. I mean, if you have a proposal to to put this into a into a separate draft, I'd say bring it up now. So so moving forward with this document, yes. can we agree that? These kinds of discussions are taken to the list. Is that do you? Does anyone disagree with that? Given I, I, the I, magnitude I, of the changes that have been made without I, discussion, I, I don't think that I don't think we have this type of uh, scrutiny on on every protocol document. There's many times offers will. No, I'm update. not talking about every protocol document. I'm talking about this one. Can we can we agree that on this document? Moving forward, any other changes are discussed on the list before being made in the document. That it's a reasonable request, I believe, given okay, well, well, this document. Stefano, for the design team, would that be a reasonable request? Because I know you're 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 managing the calls. I wouldn't pick on you, and if I didn't know that you were managing the calls on this, from the design team's perspective. For me, it's perfectly fine yes. to document the changes in the document, submit the document, and having a discussion about the document on the mailing list. That's what the mailing list is all about. So I think that's a bit of a misunderstanding. You're implying that document will just pass working group last call with the changes. That's not the intention. 
document is going to be discussed with the changes and then potentially changed or not, and then go into next stage. So no one is trying to oh. put changes and just push it through. Absolutely not the intention. Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, Les I, th this is, I don't want to turn this into a huge debate, which I think it could become, but this bothers me a lot um, because we do not write documents by a committee of the whole. You have co-authors. The co-authors make revisions to a document based upon input from the working group and discussions among the co-authors. It gets published and the working group reviews it and ultimately the working group has to approve it. The suggestion that you produce a new version of the document and you may have content that was never discussed on the working list before it was put in the document, to me doesn't reflect reality in the way all drafts proceed, just my opinion. Speaking as a working group member, I would say that's the way most of the documents I've worked on uh, progressed as well. Now, are, are you saying that you want to freeze this level of functionality? And, and is, is, that the, is, that the, is that the request you're putting so, in? So and, 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 and anything further should go in a different document? Is that what you're, I don't think we can commit to that. We could discuss that on the so, list. So this, this is very particular. I think you were even in the dark about the status of this document, right? There were some pending revisions on this document and you assume that there were no pending revisions, right? That's a discussion we had on the I, list. I, I, it happened during, so, during so the time and now we've got- More, we, more visibility yes. into what's going okay. on with this document saying, hey, this is no longer work in working group last call. It's unworking group last called. Yes. Once this is known, communicate that to the working group. Okay. That's a quite reasonable expectation. Yes. So I had pending changes that I'd requested. Mm -hmm. It's completely opaque to me whether or not those are, are in there. You know, what, what is the status of this document? Um, there's a, an email list to communicate that stuff very easily. And, and the, the addition of these two new sub TLDs, I, I still maintain, is a big enough change at this stage in the game to, to bring it up beforehand. Okay. So this, this is kind of Anna Colomac, uh, <laughs> Comatic now, but anyway, we, 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 this, you know, there's a long history to segment routing and a multi-vendor effort. I'll just say that on that slide. Uh, these are all, these are all done in, going, gone through in, um, in great detail. Uh, let's see here, 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 here's where they start. Uh, the first one, uh, we have this local block. A local block is similar to the global block. It's in the segment routing architecture now that's in the spring working group as well. It's a reserved range of labels that are used for local labels like binding SIDs, adjacency SIDs, things like that. And that's advertised so that, uh, that a controller will know what that range is and uh, uh, could conceivably use it to assign uh, some of these labels on behalf, you know, centrally. But different platforms have different label ranges for MPLS that are available for this. So it's rather than having, it's better to dynamically uh, advertise that. I guess, I guess for information, since there hasn't been anything communicated about it, is this aspect going to be put into the architecture doc or not? Is the SRLB it's in the ISIS. I have not kept up with that document. Just okay for information. Yes. Okay. I know. I know everybody in this room knows the the speakers, but please state your name so that Stefano. Stefano yeah, and Chris. This is uh, this this changed SR, SRMS preference. Segment, map, segment routing mapping server pre preference. This is tied to the conflict resolution draft. One thing that's nice about this is we'll be able to advance the OSPF and uh, ISIS protocol drafts and the 
and the uh, conflict resolution is in a separate draft and it would be generic to all the protocols using segment routing. That's in the spring working group. Now, one of the things was that was requested for that document was that there be a preference for uh, resolving, uh, de determining what's preferred if there's conflicts in the in mapping server conflicts. And so this just reflects that being advertised. Uh, and there were some things that were unclear. What 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 would happen if uh, if you you if you got a node and you, you know there was a mismatch between the algorithms that they advertised in the router information LSA and the algorithm that was attached to a prefix SID, and uh, right uh, that was clarified with a must ignore. And uh, same sort of thing. It, it talks about, uh, we remove, well, that, no, this is actually removed because this is now covered in the conflict resolution draft, which actually covers conflict resolution in exceedingly more detail than, than this. So this, was, this, was, this, this is removed from here, this. And we begin the socialization process, although it didn't go too well. Uh, and we're going to discuss the changes on the mailing list and gauge readiness for working group last call. Like I said before, we have gotten from the ISG, IS, IESG to approve a second uh, year of uh, on the temporary of allocation of the temporary code points. So it's not that uh, pressing that we get this draft published as it was before we had that. So we're going to. Um, wait and make sure everybody's in agreement it's ready for working glass call before doing another one. Any, any more questions on this before we move? Yes. Uh, just yeah, from Huawei, uh, perhaps I missed something uh, because I didn't read the new uh, draft. Um, but I found that uh, uh, the local block uh, is import uh, is imported in this uh, uh, draft, right? But uh, uh, I have the question about because like the RDP or SVPT, they use the local label. They didn't uh, uh, how to say um, advertise the local block, local uh, space, uh, local label um, space. Why uh, signal routing? will uh, advise, advertise the local label block. Because there's a use case where a central controller allocates the binding SID or even, and it needs to know what the local block is. Uh, but I, uh, and, you, and, and, and were you in the uh, IDR working group? You know, this has also been added to the BGPLS extensions as well that's that that's how it would use it it would it, if you're you're right you're right if 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 it's if it's local if it's only the the ospf router or the segment routing router that's assigning the local label nobody needs to know about it in advance but if you there are use cases where a controller would need to know this range like one of them is binding sid if it wants to control the binding sid that's used for a certain uh a certain tunnel or something like that. It's good to know the. So you uh, mean that uh, the controller will allocate the uh, label, right? It'll choose a label, and then the local node will allocate, will attempt to allocate that label for that, for that purpose. So that, uh, so so as I know that uh, PCCC um, <laughs> proposed that uh, the the label uh, can be allocated. By the controller, right? So you mean now the new use case for for the uh, for the OSPF um, local uh, LB block is for the uh, uh, how to say the controller will have the use case to uh, allocate the local label like the binding segment of, uh, label one, for yeah. the binding segment. Okay, I think perhaps we have. Um, uh, so we, we, I agree that, uh, but I will think about this. Okay. Because we, because uh, because Huawei has proposed that a controller will allocate the uh, label. 
Oh, yes, okay. So it has to do with MSD draft, Just even so it's name. not Japan server, sorry. It's not explicitly described. I'll add the use case in the future when a controller tries to find a not capable of pushing down whole step and there is none, it might go and segment segment routing tunnel, identify an anchor node where binding seat would instantiate another segment of end-to-end -end segment routing tunnel, and it needs to know which value to use. And this is exactly the use case from my point of view. Stefano Prividi, Cisco. Yeah, the, the scope of the TLV here is just to give to the controller the knowledge about the local base that the router has. That's it. Then it's up to the controller to decide what to do with this information. And typically the controller will use this information so to program the router, to instruct the router on using a specific label that falls into the range that the router has allocated. That's that's the the use case. Hey, Derek. Uh, just yeah, from Huawei, if the 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 uh, extension uh, is only for to notify the controller uh, such information, uh, but how to how the uh, controller use this? Uh, I think if you want to uh, uh, notify this uh, notify this to the controller. I think it not is only for the segment routing scenario because I think for the uh, for the PC for SVPT right perhaps uh, the PC controller want to know this information too. Yeah, why not? Still, you will use that TLV to propagate the local base. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we are same. moving on to Yang. Okay. Hello. Okay, I'm Derek Yang from Arcus. So I'm here to um, give a presentation update on the OSP of Yang models. So um, in IT of 96, uh, it's just a summary of what we did is, uh, at that time, we are pretty much the, uh, the model is complete. And so what we did in the last three months, is all the go back, we review it and see if there's any bugs, missing things and um, can we tidy things up a little bit? So here's the result of the last three month work. Okay, so um, the first thing we have add uh, AC and Helen to uh, as the office list to the draft to recognize their contribution. Mm -hmm. So, and also some update on uh, contact information of different authors. Um, so one thing we did is that we go through to uh, the model and we figured that we, pretty loose in some terms. And we use enable, enabled it, disabled it, disable. So we go ahead and um, go through that and we settle into um, enable. So uh, here's a few uh, entries we change from um, disabled enable and uh, enabled it enable to just make it more consistent. Um, and now update OSPF timers. Um, so we used to have millisecond resolution and uh, after some discussion, we decided, well, second is enough, so we changed that. And um, also update some description, it's not very clear at the beginning. And uh, one, and during the, the review, we find that we are missing one important timer, so that timer, so we have no idea when the neighbor is going to expire from the operation state, so we add it back there. Um, OSPF in the vault. So it's mainly some uh, clarification. We add, um, there's no range specified before. So we add the range um, to set the delay and um, the transmission, we transmission info to one second, 3600 30, seconds. And also um, set the depth in the fold to the 31-bit um, positive, positive, in positive integer as designed in the uh, MIPS, OSPF MIPS. Um, and also adjust the type to accommodate that accordingly. Uh, virtual link. So when we go through, we figure that um, in the previous model, we have MTU ignore, prefix suppression, that doesn't work, doesn't belong to virtual link. So we go and we arrange the grouping so that this two field or these two options uh, only exist in real interface, not virtual link. And a new type. So uh, we know that the TE group has, TE working group has uh, for their TE model, they have made use of the 
uh, IHPOE bandwidth um, uh, representation in the, T, in, the, in the T model. So we're doing the same thing. Uh, the same type has been defined in IETF routing type, dot yank, uh, but I think that uh, document is not completely approved yet, is it? No, it's not. It's being yeah. presented Friday in the routing working group. Okay, so what we did is that we uh, copy the same structure, uh, uh, define the same type in uh, OSPF draft uh, model locally and use that. And when uh, waiting for uh, the other draft model get approved, then we can switch to that. Derek, I just, I just want to say something. This was kind of interesting that we discovered that we had a different, uh, at least three different representations for the IEEE uh, bandwidth type across the different models. And yep. Yes. Yeah. OK. So um, yeah, another um, minor thing is uh, we have the NTBIT, the NSSA translator. Uh, we have it in OSP V3, LSA in drop in the model, but not for V2. So we catch it and add it back. And we, we move the L bit because it, the L bit is actually not set in the LSA, but uh, we mistakenly put it there. Um, and uh, also, uh, again, we point that from when people compile the model of Conti, Conti they find some uh, XPath reference errors. Uh, in some fields, so we fixed that. Okay, aesthetic labor configuration. We got some people say uh, we got some feedback saying that the neighbor could be some some vendor configured using a router ID. So um, we changed the identifier to a more generic name so that it could be either ways. But we are actually looking at that to find out um, uh, the exact configuration of those vendor. So this one we're still looking at it. So SR. Um, as you see um, at the beginning, we have um, extract the SL draft, uh, the SL model from this OSPF draft and put it into its own draft because there's still something uh, being discussed in the SL uh, model. So uh, we want to take it out so that both the SL model and the OSPF based model, including the BFD model, could uh, move separately. Um, in, regarding to the SL model itself, that's nothing must change. We just changed. Uh, the grouping name because uh, they split the grouping into two, and uh, we just use some use it accordingly. Uh, but that's no semantic change. So um, current status, so the same. Both the config state operation state we're pretty complete right now. Uh, as for implementation, we know that Cisco implemented um, uh, some earlier version, and um, and I would like to know if uh, anyone here, vendor or open source, if they implement any of the draft. Okay, so uh, it would be great if we have more implementation. I will check with Cisco to see what uh, they plan to add, uh, input, uh, implement a newer draft, a version of draft. So next step, uh, as I said before, we are waiting for uh, this IETF, Yang, IETF routing type .yang to be available. And we'll update the draft for that. And we also noticed um, there's some new uh, compile errors coming from some new tools, so we will fix that. After we did that, I think we are ready uh, to get to a last call. The tool is uh, uh, Yuma Works uh, from Andy Bierman's company. Yeah. Okay. Question? Uh, Shraddha from Juniper. Um, I think until we uh, freeze on the uh, SR dra OSPF SR draft, we can't also freeze the uh, SR Yang draft because there will be changes, right? For yeah, example, yeah, so the local block has to be added to the. True. So, so uh, when I say last call here, it's just mainly for the base draft, not the SL draft. Okay. Okay. That was a result of a routing working group chairs uh, meeting we had. We decided for I, both ISIS and OSPF, we'd split it into two two separate uh, model, split that module out into a separate draft of the model. Stefan Kowski from Orange. Uh, I think, Derek, we have to just sync on some naming convention between ISIS and OSPF. I started to do it for ISIS, but maybe there are some fields yeah. that we need to align again. Sure. OK. OK. You think? Thank you. Thanks. OK, well, Leah's going to the mic. Oh, she's already there. So yeah, you're Derek. So it's great. <laughs> I'm really happy to see progress on this. Um, it would be really good if it's ready to go before next IETF. Okay. So please get with people and keep doing this really important and needed work. 
very quickly. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. So, request to see as part of routing and design team. I think we really need to clarify usage of notifications versus RPCs and how all the models should be configured since we started this ATF and we want to finish some models next ATF. We, we have been really uh, shying away from too many R, uh, unique RPCs in the models. I, I, I think you can get into trouble if you start defining a lot of RPCs. I don't see in these standard models and unless you know, you know, you have the potential to get lots of inconsistencies across them. I know we have, we have, we have some queries that are, are, uh, we have one in routing config, but uh, I, I think we should use those sparingly. That's my opinion. We can talk about this. This can be a, uh, we have a meeting a week from Monday. Yeah, so I would really urge you to provide guidelines to routing area how to deal with it, as part of design team. Okay. Well, you're on it too. So yeah. Okay. Now we've entered the, the now 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 we've entered the part of the meeting that you've all paid you all paid to see. Now so <laughs> at this point, what I'd like to suggest is you want a line to start is, is both uh, Chris and I finish our, our uh, I'm gonna kinda hurry through mind and, and, and such, and then we'll have the discussion after both are completely done. And like I, I said before, I don't know if Nei Ming was in the room, but I moved him his to the last, and if it and if we don't have time for it. He will cover both OSPF and ISIS geolocation in the ISIS slot. Okay. The the last thing I want to say is throughout this discussion, I will be speaking as a working group member, not as the co-chair, since I'm an offer on one of these drafts. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can have a question if it's a question on a specific slide, but let's let's keep the debate until both presentations are done in the interest of time. Okay. Okay, this is a draft. This is a draft Peter and I offered a long time ago. Uh, here's the status. The Oh, the first thing that happened was the OSPF working group standardized uh, OSPF prefix linked attributes as the uh, a generic mechanism for advertising prefix and linked attributes. And that was RFC 7684. And it's used by segment routing and a host of other drafts. We also have OSPF V3 extended LSAs, which uh, I'd like to see get more traction because in that when that is done, we will be on par with ISIS as having all the information in a sing single container because these are completely uh, TLV based. Whereas now, with the prefix linked attributes, you still have two. You still have the base LSA plus the prefix linked attributes for applications such as segment routing. It's been presented a number of IETFs. Hasn't been accepted due to some controversy, uh, and we've had some good discussion on the list. The changes since the last week, what we've done is we've had we've talked about this, and one thing that we noted was you couldn't have, you couldn't identify which applications used which attributes if you had identical attributes. So we added uh, added that uh, in in there. We had some examples. There are some use cases. Please look at the draft again. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I want to leave time for the discussion. Uh, yeah, there's a there, and and we also have if you want the attribute to use be used by all applications, we allow for that as well. And we're uh, what at least at least what we've done at uh, Redback and Cisco, we've had the TE database is separate for the. Um, I can say because I've, I I was involved in both those implementations. Uh, separate for from the uh, OSPF link state database. And we're looking at, at a similar, there's a draft coming in ISIS for similar encoding. The encodings are going to be different because the two, I mean, the codings are going to be the same or close to the same, but the mechanisms for advertising aren't necessarily going to be the same because the protocols already have multiple LSAs versus a monolithic LSP. 
or more than one up to yeah, I mean I mean you people all know how it works and we want, would like to have this discussion on accepted as a working group and there's going to be a similar draft for ISI is coming okay uh, let's let's do the other presentation for by Chris You notice how I hurried through mine. <laughs> yeah, thank you for <laughs> making enough time for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, that gives me enough time to uh, <laughs> give this adequate attention. Okay, so uh, Trot and I have uh, have been working on this for for a while, um, and basically, this is a, an alternative proposal to addressing a the problem that. Uh, the draft that uh, AC was just talking about uh, addresses, but without creating sort of extra problems. So this uh, application here uh, is one that is deployed today uh, using standards-based mechanisms. Uh, so in this situation, uh, basically we do SRLG-aware IP fast reroute. Um, and this can be done either using uh, node SIDs or LDP to distribute the labels. And it gives you um, protection. If, if this link fails, this is the primary path, if this link fails, it can make sure that your backup path isn't a part of the same SRLG as that failed link. So uh, in this case, you would use either a node SID or uh, the label learned via LDP for node W there. And this is standardized in RFC 5286 as well as RFC 7916, very clearly standardized. And the mechanism for getting the information about the SRLG is very clearly standardized in uh, 5286, um, saying you can get it directly from 4203, which is the TE opaque LSA. And so we have implementations and deployments uh, using this mechanism. And to derive the SRLG information associated with a link in the router LSA. So um, the, the structure of the TE opaque LSA and the link TLV inside of that is, is slightly different from the extended link TLV in the extended link uh, opaque LSA. Or, but um, but not that different, and it has all of the information needed to correlate a single link TLV with a link in the router LSA. So correlation is very straightforward to correlate this link with that link. Um, some discussion on the mailing list uh, seemed to imply that this was difficult, uh, but it's not. So when you add the possibility of using an adjacency SID, um, you can address some other scenarios. Uh, and you would accomplish that, say, with topology-independent LFA, where you could use a combination of node SIDs and adjacency SIDs to address this kind of scenario where you have uh, parallel links uh, and, say, one of them it belongs to the SRLG of your primary next top. And so you could actually specify uh, that you would take link two in this case. So a similar case that's not addressable by remote LFA because shortest path forwarding can't distinguish between those two links, but the use of an adjacency SID there allows you to, to select this path, this particular path avoiding the SRLG in your backup path. So the obvious way of implementing this uh, and getting the information to accomplish this is to still get the SRLG information from the link TLB and the TE opaque LSA. Uh, and that's correlated as before to the router LSA. Um, and then you get your adjacency SID information from the extended link opaque LSA. And that's correlated uh, based on the header information here. Uh, so both types of correlation here uh, are currently done in implementations. So 
going back to the router LSA, it's quite easy to then associate uh, this SRLG, so the SRLG here with the, uh, excuse me, the SRLG here with the SID here with the router LSA. Very straightforward. So uh, the issue comes when you want to use the, the uh, TE attributes for uh, SR or RSVP. Um, so in most scenarios, you actually don't have any sort of uh, backwards compatibility issue. Uh, in an SR-only network, there's no problem. In an RSVP-only network, there's no problem. Even in an SR-RSVP network, where uh, all the links are running both SR and RSVP, there's no problem. Uh, the issue comes in, and I'll, I'll go into that in the next slides, where you have SR on some links and RSVP on different links. That is, there are some SR links where you want to use these TE attributes, but you do not want to uh, even allow the possibility of RSVP to be attempted to be signaled across that link because you don't have it enabled. So you don't want to sort of create churn in your RSVP signaling. So uh, we have a short-term workaround uh, for this, and that's basically using uh, admin groups. It's all RSVP implementations know about admin groups, so it's very simple to create an admin group. Just any operator can choose, say, admin group four to mean RSVP is not enabled on this link. Therefore, you advertise that on uh, the links you don't want RSVP to, to be used in the CSPF computation. Um, and you put that constraint on your LSPs and the problem is solved. Um, you know, that creates a lot of extra config that ultimately you want to be able to clean up. Um, so it seems reasonable to have a long-term solution to this. Uh, and that's what I'm going to discuss here. I, I have more details on the short-term workaround in the uh, ISIS presentation, uh, but I will, I'll skip that for, for the moment. So the long-term solution that we're proposing here uh, is to address this problem. So suppose you have a deployment, and this is already occurring, that you have a deployment, uh, at least in, in the ISIS case, where you have uh, an SR, you have links that you only want SR to run on, and you don't want uh, RSVP that's also in that network to try to use that link to signal across. So current implementations um, assume that the presence of the link TLV in the TE opaque LSA means that RSVP is enabled on a link. So in this scenario, uh, if, if these links are advertising the SRLG, which is in the link TLV, then R will assume that RSVP is enabled uh, try to include it in its CSPF, could use that as a path, and uh, then, uh, then try to signal RSVP, an RSVP LSP across it. Um, it would fail, but it creates signaling churn. So the solution that we're proposing is to add a new sub-TLV to the link TLV of the TE opaque LSA, and it's a TE protocol sub TLV, which basically all it says is um, if R RSVP is not enabled on a link, it's zero. And if RSVP is enabled, you set it to one. So you're easily able to indicate um, what protocols are enabled on a link. Uh, we've also included SR being enabled on a link or not. That's still debatable, I think, because you already have the possibility of adjacency SIDs to figure that out. But the main part here is RSVP, a mechanism to tell whether or not RSVP is enabled on this link. So the proposal, that's the proposal described here in uh, this draft, draft HEGDA OSPF advertising TE protocols. The proposal in uh, TE link attribute reuse is, to solve this problem is basically the following. Any useful information in the TE opaque LSA based on this proposal needs to be either copied or moved over to the extended link opaque LSA. Uh, and then you're able to not advertise the TE opaque LSA. 
Uh, so that's, that's the proposed solution to that particular case. So that addresses that particular case, but creates other problems. This is the case where, well, in fact, you do want to run both RSVP and segment routing on the same links. In that case, you need to duplicate the information and the, uh, the draft really doesn't address how you deal with conflicts. But in general, when you have duplicated information, if they differ, then you need to deal with the situation of which to trust. Um, so in general, that's pretty complex. That's how uh, uh, much under is. So what do you mean by conflict? Can you explain more? Uh, so if the SRLG value is, uh, say, 1,001 over here, uh, but 1,002 over here, um, what, how do you interpret this? Chris, how many more slides you, you've gone for 10? How many more slides you have? Uh, about Over 10 minutes. Three or so. OK. Whoopsie. I locked myself out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. Thanks. OK. <laughs> Okay, so that would be the scenario, for example, where you'd have, uh, I mean, just look at um, the SID conflict resolution draft in terms of rules for how to resolve. If the link has multiple SRLGs, it has to be advertised on both, right? That's the idea then. So if we this, is, this is what this is proposing as it currently stands. That's what draft TE reuse is proposing as it currently stands. Uh, do you have a question, or are you going to wait for the, the debate uh, session? I have a question. Okay, uh, okay. In general, uh, why are you not using the unreserved bandwidth as an indicator whether RSVP is enabled or not, right? Because this is usually the TLV, which is really generated by the RSVP uh, state machinery. So uh, some implementations do that for ISIS. Um, however, we believe that most implementations currently out in the world um, don't do that. But that would be another solution, actually, to take to basically say, OK, that is the mechanism for um, determining if RSVP is enabled. Ah, OK. But, so, but current implementations don't do that. But okay. I would be happy with that solution as well, where of us deciding that that's the mechanism to address this problem. Okay, that's Stefan from Orange. Um, and as, in fact, I think it's better to have a clear semantic to say RSVP is really enabled or not, rather than trying to deduce something from a, a flag. But Stefan, I mean, um, un the, the unreserved bandwidth, this is actually influenced by only the RSVP protocol. And, and can, 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 uh, we have a bigger today. issue here. So, so yeah, let's, let's, uh, not, let's not debate, debate this, how this is going to be signaled. So uh, there are things called zero bandwidth RSVP tunnels. So this is a non-starter to, yeah. to yeah. use. Yeah. A, okay. Okay. That is, Hannes's proposal is a non-starter, right? OK. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, this problem of uh, advertising the same information in two places and then trying to figure out what is the relevant information uh, does not apply to the solution we're proposing. Um, you know, you advertise everything that's been defined in the TE opaque LSA remains in the TE opaque LSA. And if we want to, we can define new values that show up in the extended link opaque LSA. Uh, so kind of to review the the comparison here, um, you know, SR only, RSVP only, no problem for both. Uh, this one corner case here, both address the problem, but in cases where both SR and RSVP need to coexist, the uh, the solution in draft TE reuse creates new problems, as well as with existing deployments of remote LFA that use SRLGs. So just to be clear, we're not opposed to, to using this new extended link opaque LSA. For example, Great. good, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
and you can take this yeah, one. We're done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're not. We are not opposed to using it for newly defined parameters. For example, um, it may be useful to define bandwidth usable for SRTE. We can go through the details of that, uh, but you know we can add that to the extended link OPEC LSA if that's what the working group decides to do. But everything that we've defined to be in the TE OPEC LSA, and there are tens of thousands of routers out there expecting to find it in the TE OPEC LSA, should remain there. So this is just an example. I'll go into more detail in the ISI session on this, uh, you know, how this would work. But it's just an example. But again, we would propose this as a use case, and then we would propose a solution for it as opposed to working backwards from solution to use case. Chris, you're done, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Since our draft didn't compare to this draft, this is relatively new. I'll just take a little to respond to this. First of all, I sort of, it doesn't say you can't do it, but I would, I would debate the fact that these two ancillary drafts in the routing working group standardize this with a mention in non-normative text, standardize this so for, for, uh, for, so. for OSPF. <laughs> I, would, I would disagree with that. I mean, and if they should have been, they should have been, this should have been clearly said, this fits that, this. That, that, and, and we, but that, this is in contrast to so, the- So AC, that, that is completely absurd. Okay? No, no it isn't, isn't. Is it? No, that, it is. that is completely absurd that, that a reference in 5286 out of the defining uh, it just said, it, it does, it's not normative text, it just says it may be found here. It doesn't say it has to be, has to be used. There's nothing. It, oh my God. I mean, I, <laughs> but it, no, I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so okay, well, Ste so Stefan, I, well, let's and, go and, 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 and we, and kind, we kind of went, I mean, I mean, we've kind of had this circular argument on, on the mailing list uh, six months ago about whether, you know, about this. And, and, and nothing and, was concluded. Exactly, exactly. That's why I think we should, that's why I think we should look towards the future and we have the prefix linked attributes uh, LSA. We, we have lots of uh, implementations that if you advertise, I know you got a solution, but it's, it's, it's one change versus another change that treat any link that has a TP, TE opaic LSA as part of the TE topology and we maintain a separate uh, uh, TED database as well. And I think what, what, what we have with the prefix linked attributes, we have the opportunity to go down to a single LSA that's correlated with the router LSA. In OSBF B3, we have the opportunity so, to get a single LSA that has all the attributes. You, you made Whereas the argument you're, that you're, it is difficult to extend. Okay, go ahead. But so yeah, yeah. So 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 we don't. You're 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 proposing that if you're using any of these because of this ancillary reference in whatever it is, 52, whatever. Uh, you should. Everybody should have to do it this way rather than moving forward, so, and 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 you're neglecting the reference in thirty six thirty that says if you advertise a uh, TE opaic LSA, it's part of the TE topology, and you're solving it with something new. So there's It's not like this doesn't create problems as well. There's there's compa there's backward compatibility problems for someone. It's just a question in my mind of what's the best way to go forward. And, and and I know I know at least two implementations that have that assumption, two separate separate ones. I don't know about the Nokia one, but they, I'll let them speak for it. That has what assumption? That if there is a TE opaic LSA advertised, it's part of the TE topology, and you're running RSP on it. And that's so, I, I know so, you solved that problem with this, but right, it's, so, but it's not it's it doesn't it's it it's a new solution. Okay, so you know being part of the TE topology is to some extent an implementation construct, right? One could have a, a, an SR topology, an RSVP, TRTE topology, um, or you know, combine them in some way with a flag. So there's lots of implementation details, but what- Using what, an SRLGV is a local, uh, local computation too for, uh, you so, can say that that's an implementation de detail as well. So can I finish my, yes. my statement? Okay. So. What I am looking at is what indicates 
what, what are we really saying? And what is the real problem here? Uh, implementations are assuming that RSVP is enabled One implementation. On no, any, so what, what you mean, no, 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 AC. What you mean when you say is included in the T topology means CSPF could choose that link to try to signal an RSVP LSP across and it's a problem because RSVP isn't actually enabled on the link, so signaling will fail. So the, the real issue here is not that it's included in the TE topology, but that it could result in RSVP being attempted to be signaling across a link that doesn't support, that doesn't have RSVP enabled. So if we can take it back to that, that is the, the issue here. Well, that's, so, that's so one I, I issue. I believe that, yes. that our implementations are very similar in this respect. Okay, Th this is not implementation specific. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 you've so, also, I, so you, you've I, introduced I wanna, a problem. Yeah. You've introduced a solution to that problem that everybody would have to implement. So we have a a workaround that will work for anyone who, who encounters this situation for as long as they they need to use it. Oh. Okay. But long term, generally operators like you know yeah. solutions that are clean out there. That okay, if you can clean this up, you know, five releases down the road, it would be nice to get rid of this config. But the admin group workaround solves this without any problem. Okay. So one point you've, you've made several times uh, is that it is difficult to correlate the information from the uh, TE opaque LSA and the link TLV to the router LSA. I didn't say it was versus difficult. I said we're already correlating two LSAs when you do segment routing. This would add a third. Okay, so it, it's, this, it's, it's, it's this, it, this it, is trivial. Okay, it's a trivial lookup. Okay, you look it up in a tree. No, I, you say I, I realize that. So you have, you have three of them to correlate as two. It's, it, it, it's bulk that the implementations don't need. I mean, I mean, you already have the bulk, but you, would, you could get rid of it if you use the SRLGB and the prefix links attributes. At the expense of immense testing problems for service providers, uh, backwards compatibility problems, just figuring out, okay, when I enable this, am I enabling it in this, in the extended link TLV or in the link TLV? I think I think you move forward, use the, the prefix links attributes to TLV. Okay, and your existing, so the, the thousand routers out in your network that you know, aren't going to be upgraded for three years. I have empathy for that, but you can you can solve that problem. <laughs> okay. I mean, nobody else. So, is... so there's several people in line. Or yes, is okay. this the How main session or? Okay. So, so especially if, if there is some operators here who would like to chime in also, that will be useful. Yes. Uh, so Stefan from Orange, uh, I think there are good ideas in both drafts, uh, but the main issue that I have is we are rushing on solutions uh, before really agreeing on what we are, we want exactly to solve. First point, what is the exact definition of traffic engineering? There was some discussion within uh, on the mailing list. I don't really agree with the definition what has been put it in the uh, uh, in Peter's draft because Peter tells that uh, when we are doing uh, some um, IPFR churning path. We are not doing traffic engineering, but we are doing traffic engineering. That's why we are using the traffic engineering extensions. We want to tune the path and constrain the path using certain information that are coming from uh, the IGP, whatever it's uh, SRLG or admin groups or even bandwidth information. So this is my first point. Traffic engineering is not only RSVPT, it's also SRT, but it's also IP fast throughout path tuning. And it's a Cisco draft. And Cisco implementation, for example, for TIFA is using traffic engineering uh, tunnels. So it's clearly traffic engineering application. So then, what uh, I want, I think uh, in terms of behavior, the, um, the problem of having some links running RSVP and some links running SR only is a valuable problem. So we need to solve it. 
do we need also to solve the case where we are running both protocols on the same links, uh, not really protocols, but both traffic engineering topology on the same links, but using different attributes, telling that SRT will use particular attribute value and SRT, uh, SRT one particular attribute value and RSVP another particular value and maybe for another application like TI LFA uh, fast reward, we are using another application, uh, another set of attribute values also. So do we need to solve it? I think it could make sense, but in, if we go to this, so in OSPF, you have two uh, LSAs now. You have the, I would say, the legacy OPAC uh, LSA and this extended uh, um, link OPAC LSA. So we have two. So I understand in Peter's draft that he wants to put traffic engineering use case in one and non-traffic engineering use case in the other one. But I think it's not really a good idea because what we want to achieve here is a kind of multi-topology scenario where I can have multiple values uh, for uh, some particular fields. And if I have only two LSAs, it may not be enough. So I would say if I have an aligned topology, I could use the same, uh, LSA for multiple applications, whatever it's RSVPT, TILFA fast reward, or even um, RSVPT. And if I want to change the topology, I may be able to use multi topology for this purpose. And it's more flexible because I can create any topology. I'm not limited by two LSAs. I can create one, two, three, four, five, six topology if I have six applications. And I think the point of having a flag uh, telling that which um, application is activated on a particular um, topology is valuable also. Mm -hmm. Because I, I don't want to duplicate information if it's not really necessary. So we, we have I someone think... on Meet Echo, I think, right? Do we want no, that, that person out of the queue, so they continue the queue. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, Shoda, you want next? Yeah. yeah uh... So uh, regarding the uh, using SRLG from the TE opaque LSAs for um, LFA applications, I think this is standardized. I, I think it's already mentioned 5286 plus 7916. Uh, those are the RFCs that standardized it. I mean, it says you have to take SRLG from, and this is the place from where you have to take it. So there, it's, I mean, I, it's I would already argue, you know, implemented this, and so, so we, we, there was, even if this so far there was no here, other place where an SRLG was coming in. was the only place in, to right? find it when this was written. But it's so clear. It's exactly in 4203. There, there's no debating this. You know, if, if, if there are implementations that are already using this and deployed, uh, you know, it's, there is no meaning if you want to change it today, if you want to bring in a new LSA and, and uh, change all of this and say that, you know, it's not going to work. LFA uh, applications which use SRLG from this place is not going to work is, then there's no meaning to standardization, right? I mean, whatever we do, we have to be backward compatible. So even if you, you know, your problem of correlating three different LSAs is not going away because you have to be backward compatible. You have to be originating SRLG into your opaque LSA for LFA applications. Only if, only if you're running, you only need three LSAs with our uh, proposal if you're using both RSVP and segment routing on the same link. Now that, and that will probably be a temporary situation. In yours, you need three LSAs forever. You will need three LSAs forever because you have to be backward compatible forever because the LFA applications will always going to look into the um, T opaque LSAs and you, ne you never have a control on you know, when all the routers in the network get upgraded to a newer version, right? So I don't see how this correlating of three LSAs is going away. It's never going away. It can be a, I mean, I mean, that's got to be a domain-wide uh, parameter anyway. So there's, there's definitely ways because you want everybody computing it the same way. Uma? Uh, hi, this is Umachandri. Can you just uh, uh, show the table where you showed the no, uh, problem, like, you know, no problem, problem kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, so actually, thanks for putting this. Actually, this gives the clear picture, like, you know. Uh, so th the existing deployment are RLFA, RLFA and LFA use the SRLG. And first, is the issue I feel. 
probably one of the thing I'm thinking is probably uh, if update, if you want to really put into the new opaque TLSS, like, you know, link opaque uh, TLSS, the information, then it has to update RFC 5286. But again, uh, the backward compatibility problem still kills. Actually, that's mm -hmm. the thing probably. That's, I think we want to hear from AC mm -hmm. and Abai. If updating RFC 5286 and remote LFA is an option by solving a, by putting a backward compatibility option in your solution. So I, I don't actually see how how that solves things from a practical point of view with actual deployments. I mean, we can change the the standard, but that then requires service providers to demand that that new version of the standard be implemented and waste cycles on on stuff that's not bringing any value to their networks. Well, you'd have you'd have the value of having, especially if you're not doing both SR and uh, RSPPT ELSA in the same network, you'd have the value of having uh, less LSAs. <coughs> and it could be a it, it's it, it can be a dom domain domain mm -hmm. based parameter which one you use. So that's. I mean that's the that's the that's choice. a that's a it's it's simply the LSA count that you're concerned about, well, and and the and the complexity the complexity before, of, of, of before, correlation uh, of, of of correlating multiples before SPFB three okay. we get to that we get on a par with ISIS of having all the attributes for a link in 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 one LSA, mm -hmm. and that's where we ultimately want to get to. So I disagree I mean, I, with that that goal. I mean, if, if that was the goal, actually. Um, you know, when creating the extended link LSA, maybe this was this was the mistake. You know, this could have just as easily been in the TE opaque LSA. So, well, then it would have been. If that would have been the case, I don't think we would be having this ar argument now. That, but, that's true. That's but, true. But but, but I mean, but th if, this if, was not if, discussed at that time, and so you know, it's open for debate. But uh, right, right. But yeah, this has been. The the the, the yeah. prefix I, look, I'm, I'm not, has been I'm not proposing has, has been implemented. I'm not on proposing five, to five. Right, yes, I understand. I'm not proposing to move this, but right. um, the fact that this exists is not a valid argument for everything moving to it. So, less the scribe has a comment. He gets precedence. Yes. I have the AC priority chip. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, did. I think to, for me, Stefan is the only one who has really captured the essence of of what we need to focus on. It's all about the requirements. What problem do we have to solve? You're going to have an endless debate about whether your format is better or causes more uh, uh, backwards compatibility problems or whether Peter's proposal has more backwards compatibility problems. We have, we have some requirements that have been given to us you know, from our customers that we cannot meet with the current encoding, in which, frankly, your draft does not meet. If the working group agrees that these requirements need to be addressed, then we have to have a solution that addresses them, and we will have to deal with the backwards compatibility problems, which exist with either solution. So I, I agree that the use cases and requirements for this need to be fleshed out uh, beforehand. Um, as they are in this current document, um, in, in both documents, I would say that, you know, we're the, I, I will say both documents do not do an adequate job with use cases. Um, and so that would be a reasonable starting point. Um, I think the SRLG uh, scoping use case, um, if we start with just the use case, uh, it might make sense to have arbitrary scoping. Or we can find that, oh, there's enough, enough values of SRLGs to simply make ac applications that uh, scope themselves or use configuration based scoping. So we can go into this uh, in a lot more detail if we describe those use cases well. Yes. So I have a simple question. Uh, earlier you said, you know, what if you have a thousands of 
nodes in a network that aren't going to get upgraded for years and years. Um, so if those things are running RSVP TE and looking at the RSVP TE database, how does adding an extra TLD in there help anything? So I said there is a short-term workaround, um, and I have it in, if you're going to stay for ISIS, I have a, a longer description of that, but it's basically uh, admin group, okay, RSVP, I think every implementation knows how to look at an yeah, admin group I, I put it in and spec. exclude, yeah, and exclude <laughs> that admin group. So any operator who faces this problem, and this is what operators are doing today who face this problem, at least in ISIS, is, okay, configure well, the admin not, group. Not only is it the way they do it today, but it's kind of one of the major reasons for having put it there in the first place. You have different applications, you can separate yeah, them yeah. using that mechanism. Mm -hmm. David? Uh, that David Lampeter speaking as a Quagga maintainer in this case. Um, so I would like to plus one less and Stefan's comments um, and add to that that um, for us, being an open source project, I have people banging on my door, submitting patches, implementing bits of this, and we just recently got an um, implementation of 7471, I think. And from this, I'm confused as heck what is an application, what is supposed to be the same, what is distinct entities. And I think all of these drafts need to be very explicit and actually list the, the targets of where this is aimed and whether LFA and FRR are the same uh, thing and use the same bits and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, I, I don't know how to decide if a patch is correct and should be merged or not, then that'll just create another broken implementation on my end. I, I think that the, the best model uh, is actually one that doesn't so much talk about applications, but just thinks about this as information that is being advertised that can be used by any application. And even by, so an RSVP application or even multiple RSVP applications would know whether or not it could signal across it based on this information. Um, so, so anyways, we, we can go into more detail in, in sort of defining the actual use cases, but I think that model serves us well for, um, for the future. You could also imagine different SR applications making use of this information. So just sort of scoping things, one thing for SR. So if, even if your answer is that the scope of this is everything, I think that needs to be very explicit. So just add that to the draft, mm -hmm. the scope of this is to be used for everything. That, that then my question, question is answered oh. as well. Okay, thanks. Hannes? Um, I guess we're having here two problems at hand. Uh, problem number one is to really uniquely identify whether RSVP is enabled or not on the link and where to store that information, right? Which gets us into the, I would say, sluggish uh, ambiguity of the TE extensions, right? We have those extensions now out there for how long? 17 years, uh, and people uh, are making use of it outside of TE, right? Uh, just, you know, for carrying some bits and pieces across. So uh, either way, whatever we come up with, uh, whatever container we finally place that information, I think uh, to, to, to be somewhat compatible, you have to do it both in the old container format and in the new container format, right? Since this code is already deployed, right? Abuse already has been done. So, and there's precedent cases for that, right? Uh, uh, there's in ISIS, uh, there is, uh, you know, in certain paths of the code, uh, uh, we keep uh, announcing both old and new style TLVs for 20 years now, right? So, so I'd like to just comment on that. And, it, and in this case, uh, we all know how you as a uh, deployment engineer how easy it is to correlate these LSAs you've explained to us. So we, if you have SR applications, you're going to need to advertise the prefix link attribute anyway for these, for the, for, for, for. Uh, so, so these are different, there's a prefix LSA and there's a link LSA. Right, well, okay, okay. So which are you talking about here? I'm talking about the extended link attribute LSA. Extended link, okay. I mean, I mean, it, you won't, yeah, it, talking about it, this it, one, it, extended it, link opaque LSA, clear. and the extended I think, I think link it's clear, right. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry, but you mentioned the prefix, so I, I well, was Well, I, I was confused. going by the name of the, the okay. draft, right. But, okay. But I see why, why not backporting the uh, adjacency seed to the uh, standard opaque LSA, link opaque LSA? 
You will not be have because, to. because there's been five. So, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's look. What's important here isn't the discussions about what something meant um, when we wrote it and didn't use a master of a. I mean, of course, it's easy to jump on that and say no. But and the point isn't to say, oh, it said this was a TE thing versus how we've used it because we've used it in ways that didn't exist when the T when it was described as TE. Right. The point is handling the backwards compatibility and understanding what the use cases are and getting those nailed down. Sometimes we do technical solutions that are not optimal and the best because it has to handle backwards compatibility so and the use cases let's figure out the use cases and the backwards compatibility is clearly making this a hot issue and handle those and if we end up with not the trivialist salute technical solution to implement but it doesn't cause our operators pain that still feels like a win to me i think there's backward compatibility issues in both of these solutions whether you say you can get around with it for configuration hack or not i mean because because of the way the way it's being used and if we're going to subtle lines you know we got in this discussion there is a line that's there is a line in 3630 which is an ospf uh, rfc that says that if you if you uh, advertise the opaque link LSA, it's part of the T topology, the RSPVT topology. So, so, so I think the, the, a reasonable no, no, path forward. No, okay. okay. So, but yeah, let me yeah. reiterate: I'm not trying to say one solution or the other. I'm saying let's figure the back. Talk about what the actual backwards compatibility issues are and the use cases. The rhetoric of going back and trying to read nuances that weren't intended into RFCs that's, that's is not productive forward going you didn't see any of those in my presentation of course i didn't i understand that i'm talking about the conversation <laughs> okay so we have, um, we have chris, chris any last comment have yeah yeah so i, I think i think the actual path forward here is to set these two drafts aside do not adopt either i believe that is clear and then yeah so start with a new document a use case document this is you know we're, we're sort of not hot on use case documents but clearly we need one here and we, we focus need, we need on use that. case discussion. Do we need a document we can pull on the list? Uh, I, yeah, I, I think it, it helps document agreements. So it doesn't have to be published, let's right? suppose that, but it could be very suppose that on the useful. List. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try the remote call. Uh, Chris, are you able to see us on yeah. This is Christian can Hubs. Get, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, great. No, I just had, I actually just had a question. Um, Regarding the, you know, we had the nice little grid that said create problems. I'm just trying to understand is the is the is the main problem, what you know, are there plural problems or is the main problem the duplication of the SLRG between the two um, uh -oh. LSAs? Short answer, if you can close this. Uh, both duplication and deciding what the correct uh, value to use when there's two. Right, but you're gonna, but both both solutions, I think, have a flag. Then, right? I mean, so so it's really the okay. Uh, I just Chris, wanted, that that's the main problem. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. identified. Okay, yeah, let's, 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 okay. let's take. Why don't you just put that in a in a question, and we'll start a thread just on 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 what problems are created. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Nice okay. video. It looks good. Yeah. Okay, G. I am going to present this uh, Max HRC flashing problem statement and also a solution for the problem mitigation. Okay, so some motivations of this work. Uh, I will go faster with this part. We see the OSPF can generate Max HRC flashing in several cases, including the natural aging and the premature aging. And also in the field network, we have seen several cases of the improper Max HRC flashing. In which case, all these RSAs are flushed by some misbehaved router, and this kind of continuous uh, RSA flushing can severely impact the network and also services. So here's the consequence of the RSA flushing, and we'll go fast because I think everyone is familiar with this. So the continuous RSA flushing brings a lot of pain because it causes overhead in the flooding, in the routing calculation and installation, and all the protocols relies on IGP with the flap. I think one 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 nice. 
and all the services are also interrupted. So this is uh, has a big problem to the network operators. So for uh, regarding this problem, there are required solution can be classified into two aspects. The first one is to impact, mitigate the impact even before the problem can be identified. And this also improves the robustness of this uh, important IGP protocol. And for this part, the solution should not slow down the normal road convergence and the incremental deployment is needed. Uh, another part of the solution is to uh, localize the problem quickly so that the uh, operator can fix a problem, which is a persistent problem cannot be automatically fixed. And for this part, the backward compatibility is also an important uh, uh, consideration as uh, some um, mechanism defined in ISS, like the ISS POI TLV, may not be apl applicable to OSPF legacy LSAs. So here's the change uh, in this uh, new version of this problem statement. We revise the problem statement based on some discussion, useful discussion on the mailing list. And the next part is the solution for the problem mitigation. This is, uh, this is the solution aims to improve the robustness of this OSPL protocol and it will not slow down the normal road convergence and can be deployed incrementally. So basically, uh, the principle of the solution is based on the max stage router LC should be treated more carefully because in normal cases, the flushing of a router LC means the originator is no longer reachable. And this is a significant change in the network. And this kind of change can also be notified by the, remove, uh, by the update of the LCs of these neighbor routers. And also the consequent LC flushing of the same originator should be checked further as the next state of the originator is already questionable. So here's a pro proposed uh, solution. We define two types of timers for the solution. The first one, T1, it is the examination time of a suspicious LC flashing of a particular router. So when a max age router LC is received, the originator of this router LC is marked as in the restrained state. And for the T1 time, the subsequent max age LCs of the same originator will be further checked. And T2 is used to for the examination of a received max age LC for an originator which is already in the restrained state. So this LC will not trigger the road calculation until the T2 expires or is stopped by an update of the LC. So in this uh, solution, the max age LCs will still be flushed in the network, but the road calculation for the LCs in the examination it will be delayed. So here are the detailed procedures for the solution. Basically, uh, we treated the uh, uh, treated max age LC differently, uh, depending on whether it is a router LC or non router LC. Uh, do I need to go through this, or do I have enough time? Um, you have another minute. Okay. So maybe you can check the details in the draft. Basically, we will trade the different router uh, message RCs in different uh, procedures, and we will trigger the timers to delay the uh, route calculation. And uh, so when the timer expires, you can still do the route calculation. But if you receive a new update before the timer expires, this will uh, uh, does not cause the route uh, Turn for the IGP. So for the deployment, we think this mechanism can be incrementally deployed in the network. So when it is only deployed on some of the routers, it can avoid the impacts of the max HLC flashing on these routers, which enable this feature. And when it is deployed on the, all the routers in this domain, the impacts of the max HLC flashing, I think, is be totally eliminated. So the conclusion is uh, the RC flashing may cause a severe impact to the network and all the services in the network. And the solution for the impact mitigation is already proposed. While the solution for the problem localization, so you need further study and we welcome further discussion about this part. And we will solicit more comments on both this problem statement and the proposed solution. 
let, let me just let me just uh, before we close. How many people have uh, read these drafts? Okay, so quite a few. A any other comments? Uh, I I uh, I for one didn't like the mitigation, but I'll. So we already have SPF four timers uh, to con uh, to hold back on the route calculations, right? Based on updates. I mean, how is this additional timer going to help? Uh, you mean we already have a timer to delay the route calculations? SPF hold timers, right? So you you can. Uh... Yes, but it, if the max edge flashing continues, you still will trigger a lot of route uh, route calculation. Yes, but, but your it's all timer based, right? So you will have some. Timer yeah, we, we introduce a, it's same as SPF hold timers, isn't it? Uh, I think there's still some difference. Because we only delay the calculation when you already receive a max edge router, I would say. If it is a normal, if you just receive a, a max edge, I would say, a non router, I would say, it will trigger the route calculation normally according to the normal procedure. But in this case, we need to further check because the we. SPF four timers apply to max edge LSA as well, right? So you yeah, see, this is this timer for. So any I, change in an LSA will, will result into. And SPF and the mm. SPF hold timer is for that purpose, right? So yeah, here we just uh, treat the different types of uh, max edge RSS different differently, so that we but, can. But I feel that maybe SPF it's same as SPF hold timers, right? So it could. Uh, be. We can discuss offline. I think there's still some difference. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, David Hunter. Uh, so I'm not sure if I understood this correctly, but um, it seems to me that you're trying to solve a case where other routers may misbehave. And, yes, uh, Max it, Age. It's it's the case. It's the cases in OSPF where a router other than the originator. Yeah, right. Max yeah. Age so, is also yes. yes. So, but th these timers they work on the original no, router, no. right? Or they work on other routers. Okay, I should read it again. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Please read it. Okay. We're gonna do some. We're gonna shuffle. I. I just. I just like. You go ahead. You go ahead. We're going to shuffle the things. We're and starting uh, ISI starts at eleven ten. So we're going to shuffle the uh, the uh, laptops and everybody stick around. If you have to take a quick break, go out and run back in. All right, just and one quick this, one question. quick comment on this. Yeah. Okay. Any any proposal which which ignores the 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 purged LSA, the Max A LSA. Is going to cause interoperability problems, I, and I that agree. is that is what you're proposing. Yes, you cannot do that. Yeah, yes. I, I agree. I would like to see a mitigation problem that puts the burden on the router that has has the bug that is repeatedly flushing it, rather than the burden on everybody else in the domain. Yeah, this is want to release the burden on the other routers. To yes, reduce the route calculations. No, you reduce it, but I'd like to put the burden of slowing it. You know, like like we, like we like pacing, pacing 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 guy pacing the uh, flushing. If somebody is flushing LSAs other than their own due to timeouts, and you see that happening, you should slow that down as opposed to making everybody in the, the flushing. You mean yes, yes. But Rather than having everybody do do this thing yeah, with this yeah, timer, yeah. and I agree with less, but that's just yeah. Yeah, this part we will consider further. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So I've, yeah. I'm sweating that hot. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Um, yeah, what the blue fire? Uh, uh, I don't know if it would have been so if Peter was here or not. Because look at the phone. Uh, yes, he could. Very interested. Yes, he could. Yes, yes. So, so I think I think it'll be good. Then. Yeah. Oh, you need the chair, don't you? Yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna just. I'll just. I'll just come and get a seat. And I'll, yeah, I will take those. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have, have you ever used this? No, what is this? So if somebody is in the queue, you should just press the button and they come alive. Yeah, they, they okay. come up That's on the, the first time I used it. Beautiful. Yeah. Want to join me here? Uh, operating the red button? <laughs> no. Uh, I do the talking, no worries. Thank you. It's a hot seat. is good enough. Yeah. Uh, you don't have